I have been spending a lot of time working with Blazor recently, both on the server side as well as the client side. Both frameworks have come a long way, and they both promise a bright new future for .NET development on the web. However, when you start working with Blazor, you probably want to have more features than are natively provided. This is common since Microsoft provides the framework, but then lets you build the custom items you want. Fortunately, there are many people working on tools and designs to help support Blazor applications. In this video, I'm going to introduce you to my top five free resources for Blazor. Plus, I'll give you a couple of extra resources that didn't quite make the top five. Now, if this is the first video you've watched of mine, my name is Tim Corey, and it's my goal to make learning C Sharp easier. One of the ways I do that is by teaching context. There are a lot of tutorials out there that teach you what to do. I go a few steps beyond that to show you when to do it, why you should or should not do it, what pitfalls to avoid, and what the best practices are. Basically, I get you ready for the real world. If that's the type of training you're interested in, subscribe to my channel and hit the little bell icon to be notified when I release new videos. Now, if you find that you want even more Blazor Server content, I did just release a course recently titled Blazor Server in Depth. It covers a ton of ground from learning all about the parts of Blazor through authentication, data access, and even deployment. The link to the course is in the description, along with the links to all the resources that I mentioned today. Okay, let's get started with our first resource. The first resource is called Matte Blazor, which is material designs components for Blazor, okay? And what this allows you to do is create a different look, okay? So let's pick the date picker, for example. Now, the layout for this site isn't the best, but I'd strongly encourage you to look past that because there's some great stuff here. So date picker, this is all the stuff that you can do with it, but let's scroll down to an example. Here's an example of our date picker. Notice how nice that looks. Also notice that we can empty it out. We can also set it to now. So really nice features here. Also time, minimum, maximum, minimum and maximum, seconds enabled. There's a lot of stuff you can configure in there. And you've got examples for all of these. The same with file upload. We have drag and drop. We have read contents of the file and so on. So there's a lot of stuff in here that you can work with, text fields, the different ways of doing text fields. And it's all done in the material design style. So if you're into material design or you like that style, then this is a great component for you. Also note that there is the ability to theme this, so you can change the color and it will change the entire theme. So really cool stuff there. So that is mattblazer.com. The next one is if you're into charting. So chart.js is a great tool for JavaScript, but what if you wanted to use just Blazor and not use JavaScript directly? Well, no worry, we have chart.js for Blazor. Now, ignore the, the little bit of a typo there, chat.js, it's not chat.js, it's chart.js. But we have your simple charts, you have your horizontal charts, you have your time charts, you have your pie charts. Basically, if you can think of a chart, there's probably a chart here for it, all right? And this allows you to, to play around, to see what's, how it works, and then to get the source code for it as well. And the source code is right there. So really cool stuff that you can work with. Actually, that's just the data for it. Um, but really cool stuff to work with, and that's been currently supported and is continuing to be supported. So if you need charts, this is the place to go. Now, these next three of my top five are bigger and bigger, okay? So the, the first one is DevExpress Blazor, and it provides 15 UI components to work with Blazor. And this, of course, is free. All of these are I'm going to show are free. So um, this is the first kind of component set I'm showing you, and there's some really cool stuff you can do here from a, a nice data grid a scheduler, a charts, pivots, and all the rest. Now, just note, one of the things I've found with any of these component libraries is that when you have components, these, these developers make it look great. But for me personally, I don't have as many skills in the design area as they do. And sometimes when it comes out, it doesn't quite look great. Or maybe their stuff looks great, 
But if I want to add my own stuff that's not in their components, it doesn't look as good. So just note that that may be an issue and to think through how to add your own stuff with it so that you can kind of blend those styles. So it might take a little extra work to blend those styles, but the end result is definitely worth it. So they do provide a lot of editors as well. So that's Dev Express, and they provide a free uh, set of utility or uh, components for Blazor. Next up is Radzen, and this provide this is a great looking set of components. Now, some that we already have, for example, we have buttons, but they have more of a take on buttons, icon buttons, uh, disabled buttons, buttons with a secondary style and so on. Notice the source is next to each one of these. Okay, but then they have some things that are pretty cool. Login forms and uploaders and containers and there's even more stuff you can do with forms. Autocomplete, this is kind of cool. So you can start typing in um, words and then it will complete um, your, your phrase. So L-I-N-O, there you go. So we can choose the one you want. All right, uh, field set cards, if you wanna design cards, so on. There is some charting, there is some validators and other things, star ratings uh, like so. So this is a great set of components, it's about I think 40 they said, components, and it just kind of works together well. Again, providing more components allows you to have more things that they do without having to create your own, which then would have that, um, that styling issue of making sure that your, your stuff matches their style. All right, so that is the Radzen components. Next up is probably the biggest set of components available, and that's from Sync Fusion. This is a Sync Fusion Blazor components. Now, I do want to take a quick pause here to note that, that Sync Fusion is not free, but, and this is the reason why it's in my top five free list, because for most of you, it will be free. So let's scroll down first to the pricing. So the retail pricing, if you look at Sync Fusion for Blazor right here, is $995 per developer for the first year and $445 for the second year and thereafter. That's a lot of money. However, I want to show you this. Let's go back to our components page for a minute. If we go over here to syncfusion.com slash product slash community license, you can get their entire product line for free as long as your company that you work for does not make over a million dollars a year. Or if you're an individual, of course you don't, well, in theory, you don't make more than a million dollars a year. If you do, cough up a thousand bucks. But if you don't make more than a thousand dollars a year or a million dollars a year, and if you have five or less people on your team, those are the two uh, stipulations. It's basically the same stipulations for getting Visual Studio 2019 Community Edition for free. Okay, so this is the same rules as Community Edition. So if you're using Visual Studio Community Edition, then you can use this for free as well. But it's not just Blazor components. It's actually their entire library for everything, all their components. So Blazor, ASP.NET Core, MVC, Web Forms, JavaScript, Angular, React, Vue, Xamarin, WinForms, Excel, a whole bunch of things, okay? So this is everything in the kitchen sink as well. And that's all for free as long as you meet th those requirements. So let's look at what Sync Fusion offers specifically for Blazor. And they do have some nice uh, demo showcase apps, which are really neat. But then down here, these are the components they offer. And there's some really neat ones in here. One of the ones that caught my eye was the barcode generator. This is something that not a lot of uh, components do well. And my first thought was, I hope they at least do a QR code as well. Well, when you get into it, first of all, they, they provide really nice demos on the web. And they have the, net, the simple barcode, but look over here on the left. There's a whole bunch of different barcodes that you can select with examples. Come down here, there is a QR code. There's also a data matrix code. So there's a lot of different codes you can use. 
There's a source code for each of the um, the QR codes or the or the other barcodes, and basically, if you have a barcode need, this probably solves it. So really cool stuff that they offer there. Now they they do have the standard date pickers and calendars and schedulers and tree views and data grids and combo box and input masks. This is a really nice one. Um, I was actually asked about this by a um, a viewer the other day. Is does Blazor have input masks by default? And the answer is no. Well, now you can get an input mask from Syncfusion. So mobile number, you know, if you start typing, um, there's your mobile number, which is not really a number, but that gives you your nice mask with the dashes, even though you're just typing in the numbers. Okay, date of birth, again, if you st start typing, there's your date of birth, and it fills it out very nicely, and it indicates to the user, if they start typing, they say, I was born in 2015. Well, no, you have to give me all four characters, not just the first two, or all four numbers. So proc key, same thing. If you're going to start typing, here is the, the layout that a proc key would take. Okay, so nice mass test text input. So this is Sync Fusion. They've got a ton of stuff here. They do have a PDF viewer, this is kind of neat, um, that you can add as well that allows you to view PDFs. They even have uh, form filling PDFs. So if you have a PDF that's got a form in it, you can start typing out a form and filling in the information. Okay, so that's pretty neat, all right? And that is Syncfusion's Blazor tools. Again, Syncfusion doesn't just provide Blazor tools, it provides tools for a lot of other things as well. And while it's not free if you work for a larger company and you're using it for your company, that it is free for you personally. So let's just say you work for a large company, but you're not doing development for them. You're, or even if you are, you're not doing development with Syncfusion for them, but you want to do some personal stuff at home to build up your portfolio or maybe even to do some side work with, with clients of your own. Well, you can use this for free because it's not under your company, it's under you personally. So you just can't, you can't do it for your company if your company makes more than a million dollars. That's the, the big key here. Don't try and rip them off. They are doing something really, really positive and I encourage you to respond in kind, okay? So don't, don't try to rip them off. So those are the, my top five. We have Material Design, we have Chart.js, and then we have the three component libraries, one from DevExpress, one from Radzen, and then one from Syncfusion. So that's my top five, but I have a couple more that didn't quite make the list, and I think that they should be at least mentioned. And the first one is this Blazor extensions. And this is the NuGet page for it. It doesn't have a great uh, landing page with um, the showing off what all these different extensions can do, but this is, it has a total of seven packages here, and most of them you probably won't use. For example, Web USB is really neat, but it's not yet supported on most browsers. It's just supported on Chrome for Android and Chrome for the desktop mostly but that allows you to talk to USB devices on the computer that you're connecting to. That's kind of neat. Uh, but the one call I really was is blazer.extensions.storage. This is really neat. It works with local storage and session storage, and you can interact and save data to a client from Blazor. Okay, so that's really neat. We also have um, more information or more connection for Signal R. We have some more work with logging and even work with the HTML canvas to do things like drawing on the screen. So really neat stuff. They do have some things like notifications, which are not quite ready for prime time. It's the version is 0.1.3, so it's not quite a 1.0 yet, but there's some neat stuff going on here. If you decide you want to use one, just click on it. And then under setup, there is great documentation. So here's how you set it up. Here's how to use it, and here's how to inject it on a page. I mean, it, it's all laid out right there for you. So great stuff here. 
um, especially around the storage, um, storage and logging. So with that, the other one is this Blazor context menu. This is a one that was interesting to me because I never really thought about having a context menu with Blazor. I always think of Blazor as a web framework, and so I always think only left click. But what about right click? Normally, when you right click on something, you get the typical browser uh, menu. But what if instead you right clicked on it and you got your own list? That's kind of cool. For example, if you have a grid, right click on something and say, hey, I want to reload that grid. Wait, you know what? I want to delete this row. Wait, actually, I want to set this as vacation or this is dangerous. All right. So neat stuff. Um, there's a bunch of things you can do with this. Um, like this is a double click, right? Uh, menu item. We have different animations like fade in. So you can have, see different animations and different animations at different levels. So it's zoom for this level and slide for this level. You can create templates like a, a dark menu. You can have dynamic items in the list. So example, it says check. If I click it, it checks the box. Now it says uncheck. And I can also delete that item. Okay. And there's a whole bunch of stuff you can do. Um, that menu item stays open even when I'm clicking somewhere else. Or I can say auto close when I click somewhere else and it goes away. So really cool stuff here for context menus specifically. So that's my top five plus my two kind of honorable mentions. I would love to hear what your thoughts are, which ones you like or use, and which ones maybe that I missed or or didn't include in this list. Now, just a quick note, I'd love to have you leave in the comments which ones I should include, but try not to put a link. And the reason why is because YouTube filters out links. And so you probably won't be able to get your link on the screen. I might be able to catch it in the spam filter and bring it over, uh, but I get a lot of spam and so I might miss it. So just note that it'd be better to tell me what it is rather than um, have an actual URL link to that item, okay? But I'd love to hear what your thoughts are, which ones you like, which ones you want to use, and which ones you want to see me add to a future list, okay? Thanks for watching, and as always, I am Tim Corey.